you're just like a seed, but you're never quite a flower. You feel more just like a weed. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Galen Lee. I am very excited to welcome you to another edition of Quarantine Concerts, this time with my friend uh, from Philadelphia and a musician, performer, he does a lot of stuff, um, Velvet Cran. So Velvet Cran, want to introduce yourself to anyone here who may not know you? Hi, I, I'm Velvet Cran. I'm a Libra, whatever that means. Um, <laughs> I don't like long walks on the beach. Um, I'm I'm a musician. I'm a Twitch streamer. I make uh, weird performance art. Sometimes it's in Minecraft as well. Uh, really? Like art yeah. in Minecraft? Yeah. Okay, I don't know anything about that. Holy cow. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's big things. Big things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, and you're, you've been performing for how long? Kind of a lot, like you're a long time, I've been right? Velvet Crayon since 2005. I think oh. that's true. So Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been performing and making art as Velvet Crayon since 2005. Okay, I didn't realize that. Oh, I gotta fix something, I guess. They're I telling me it. there's an echo. Why would that be? Oh, Why would there be an echo? I have no idea. Um... Okay, Melanie, when you get this, tell me if there's no longer an echo. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I changed my speaker on my computer. Maybe that'll help. I have no idea. Yeah. Oh, technology. Okay, so, anyways, so you are a Libra. I am an Aquarius. I don't know what? anything about Libras, really, because none of my... I don't know anything about any of it. So. What? Yeah, wow, I don't... It's so no. fun. Dude, I just downloaded a bunch of horoscope books for 2021. Got to prepare myself, you know. That went great for everybody this year, didn't it? So, I, I don't know. No, but it's funny. My horoscope book was like, there will be a lot of uh, blocks to the path you are pursuing. And I was like, no. Well, yeah, yeah. Of course there will be. Yes. Uh, apparently, the echo is on you, Eric. It's like a big reverb. Uh, I have no idea what that um, would be. What? A big reverb. You know, you do sound a little echoier, but I don't think it's like, it's not a delayed. Anyways. Oh, Bartek's a Libra? Who knew? Hi, Bartek. Um, nice to see you. Hold on, let's see if I can fix that. I mean, I think can it you... maybe sounds like you're in a room, as opposed, which you are. You're using a room mic, right? Yeah. Yeah. They, it's, yeah. Hmm. I, you sound normal to me, just like. Oh, wait, hold on. Is it like a slight? Oh, it might be from your headphones. Uh, maybe. Oh, somebody else said they don't hear it. I don't oh, know. Okay. Let's just then they're move just on. trolling. <laughs> I don't. I don't think the people. It's your wife. So if she's trolling you, she's trolling then, me. <laughs> then that no, is. No, she's probably not. Um. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We might not be able to fix this one. Hopefully, things clear up. I think half the people are like, sounds like reverb. Half the people are saying I don't hear it. So let's just assume it's not too bad, and move forward. I think. Sure. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I am excited that you're here. I met you, well, because uh, the year I entered the Tiny Desk contest, they featured your video a That's few true. weeks before they announced the winner. And I was like, what? There's another guy? Oh, I suppose we could mention we have the same disability. Yeah, yeah. Um, this might sound better. I turned off that automatic adjust volume. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I had you screw up your Zoom no, settings. It's okay. Um, Okay, so maybe it'll be clearer here. Um, yeah, yeah, we both have uh, OI. I think different. I don't know what type I have, so. Neither do I. Uh, I never got the genetic test. I had one. Huh? But they dropped it. on. It's like on one of my arms. I have a scar. They're, you're they, joking? They dropped it? That's what the story I was always told. That they <laughs> dropped it on the way to getting it to, like, the Petri <laughs> dish or whatever. <laughs> And I was, I, like, a really little kid, and my mom was like, I'm not going to make him do that again. Oh, my gosh. Can you write a song about that? That is Maybe. kind of hilarious. <laughs> like, you you would know, except for that they dropped your test. That's weird. Um, Yeah, I mean, I assume it's type 3. So people who don't know, we have the same disability, which is that our collagen is um, genetically just not right or whatever. So our, well... I think it's right for me, but it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, uh, our bones are more fragile. I didn't break a whole lot, like sixteen bones, but I broke a ton before I was born, 
which is my mm. my arms and legs are broken uh and like kind of bent um yeah yeah and then my Mine spine too. is basically garbage so there's a lot of rods in my spine oh yeah keeping it up oh yeah i had that surgery when i was 18 and they're I like i never did the i never did the back surgery but your breathing is okay yeah yeah because mine was starting to go um and so they wanted to freeze it before it yeah got that makes sense bad. yeah it was not a fun surgery though we uh oh. uh they're like two weeks a recovery time and then they got into my back and i guess my spine is sort of jello-y rather than bony and so mm. they did a bunch of different stuff that they weren't planning on doing and i was on bed rest for six weeks before my senior year well like into senior year which mm. sounds like a crappy time but my friends came over every day after That's school nice. and we would just lay in my bed and make <laughs> stupid jokes to each other and it was actually an okay time in the retrospect nice. Yeah, yeah, when I was like, uh, oh man, I want to say like 10, they told me I needed immediate, a doctor told me I needed immediate scoliosis surgery. And I went, why? And my mom was like, why? And he was like, you need, it's bad. He needs it right now. And, and we got a second opinion and they, they said that doctor was a bit of an overreactor. Oh yeah. Mine was opposite. Mine was in yeah. Duluth. They were like, eh, just get it whenever you want. And so I obviously didn't want to get it when I was 10. So I was like, yeah. oh, I think I'll wait for a decade or so. And then um, ended up waiting a little bit too long, I think. So they couldn't correct it, but they did stop mm. it from getting worse, which is great I because see. I can still play and sing and blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. Anyways, not that we have to talk about disability the whole time, but I figured sure. in case you thought we looked a little alike, that's because everyone with OI, I think... No, they're just ableists. Let's just t call them ableists right here. I'm kidding. No, you don't think we have a like a slight? Yeah, resemblance? we have similar bone structure, but I think yes. that I think people say that about a lot of races as well. Oh, okay. Well, see, I see it as like a point of like my little family, but maybe that's just because hmm. I'm weird. I actually no, but like it is it. right. That's that's uh, the whole idea of ancestors and stuff. So we share this common like ancestrally like a lot of uh like different countries are like this like just if you grow up in a isolated region you you look alike but we have this even though we're all separate yeah all over the world i mean i did an oi yeah. event this summer and there were people in every every continent except for antarctica it was pretty cool to be like oh we're everywhere um yeah so you've been making you what would you call your music experimental Folk? Uh, no, it's not folk. What kind of is though? What do you call it? It's uh, I make I make uh, music, and uh, it's uh, it's definitely experimental at times. But I think it's it's based in the idea of uh, children's songs and classic rock. But uh, <laughs> through like my brain, I don't know. Yeah, it is kind of like Woody Guthrie, but a little bit different. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I wish I could play that well, man. Well, he's, yeah, that's true. Woody Guthrie is. I wish crazy. I could finger pick like that, but. Well, the new goals for twenty twenty one, perhaps. You have to read your horoscope and see. If... I'll have to read it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, expect big things. I'll research for you just so to let you okay. give you a heads up. Um. So, what's do you have a song that you want to start with? Oh yeah. And like yeah. maybe tell the story of why you wrote it if you have any like. Well, the first song I'm going to play is, uh, it's called, uh, uh, Roosevelt's Night, 190, what is it? 1,942nd Mushroom Dream. I just call it Roosevelt. I never, I wrote the title down and I never talk about it as the title. Um, oh. but it's an old crippled folk song, you know, it was, uh. It was passed down from generation to generation, cripple to cripple. It's about one of our own. You know, we had a long history of cripples in America. We actually, we had a crippled president once. No, not, uh, well, anyway, um, you got to think back a way back to the 1940s. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was his name. And well, he had a lot of tough decisions to make. It was a hard time in the 40s. So he did what all of us do when we have a tough decision to make. And he procrastinated and hung out with his cat. So there's a song about that man, that cat, and well, that procrastination, I suppose. 
and it goes like this. Sitting in a room, there is a man losing his mind, just screaming about Japan and about how he needs uranium. About how he needs uranium. So worried for the world, he took some mushrooms with his cat. And the cat becomes a man. And the man becomes a cat. And the man he began to purr. Yeah, the president, he began to purr. He said, oh, Eleanor, hostilities exist. There's no blinking at the fact that this is pretty dangerous. But then, then he had a thought while awaiting certain doom. A speech he had hidden in the walls of the Lincoln bedroom. And it said, be sincere, be brief, and be seated. Cause there's Nazis on the moon. And they're drilling for uranium. They turn the children in to freaks. So you asked, like, why I wrote it, and I thought about it the whole time I was singing about it. And uh, I, I remember sitting on the back porch with a friend and uh, I had this riff, and and we did that, and I wrote the whole first verse, like just like while playing that that riff, and then uh, and then I was like, that's pretty funny to write a song about Roosevelt. I'm um, taking drugs, because uh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, but there's a lot of lines that are actually his. He, he I was wondering that. I was actually yeah. like, this sounds like something. He might yeah, have actually he said, said it's all out of context, of course. Well, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, or the, we think oh, so. Eleanor, the hostilities exist. There's no blinking at the fact that uh, this is pretty dangerous. And he was talking about, you know, World War II and stuff. But, uh, but How it kept did you, going. Did you know what he said? Like, do you, are you a Roosevelt scholar? Like, how did you know about those lines? I knew some of it. Like, I was really into Roosevelt in high school. I, uh, he was a cripple, you know, and, uh, yeah. they didn't talk about that in history, really, but, but I knew it, and, uh, so I just found him really interesting because of that, because he was a great president, he created social security, I mean, like, he created a lot of government, he, he, he believed in the second bill of rights, which still isn't passed, like, basic human rights. Like, wait a minute. Oh we wanted gosh. to pass a second Bill of Rights. Okay, which would have and, been? And it had to do with everyone has the right to an education, I believe. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna get this right at all. It's okay. Uh, but this isn't I, a history show. Yeah, yeah, it was about that and, and just about basic human rights. Everybody has the right to, to an education and a right to do... I, I know education was a big part, but it was interesting. It was Wouldn't it be interesting if his, um, like... Look it up. If his presidency, even though they never ever talked about it, I mean, he must have been col- like colored or affected by the idea of his disability, and he still had value. You know what I mean? Oh, he was totally affected by it. Yeah. So, but he never even talked about it. So all these like programs where people don't have to just like suffer without any government help or whatever. That's very yeah, interesting. Think- that's super interesting. Yeah. So he. Second Bill of Rights, every American has the right to a job, 
an adequate wage and decent living, a decent home, medical care, what? economic protection during sickness, accident, old age, or unemployment, and a good education. Dang, Roosevelt's cooler than I thought. I think oh, yeah, yeah. there's some rumor in my family that we're distantly related to Eleanor or something. Oh, yeah, Eleanor was great. She was great but, in the women's rights movement and stuff. Yeah, but I don't know. I can't give you any real... My mom is not on here as far as I can tell on this chat. <laughs> Um, but I feel like that has been told in the family. So, dang, that That's is so cool. interesting. Yeah, he, it is cool that he, like, had a disability way back then. It's too bad they didn't talk about it. And he I bet. He couldn't. He couldn't. Yeah. No, there's no I way. Mean, he, especially during that time period. Uh, but, but I think it was known. I always felt like it was known. Like, people had to know. Like, people in, involved in politics had to know. Oh, they knew. I'm just saying, like, yeah, yeah. it's too bad he couldn't talk about it because all of these ideas that we're, like, currently arguing, like, do He's you get health care? You know, that's it's like... Bernie Sanders' platform. Yeah. Well, it is, for sure, but and I'm just saying... that scene is yeah. radical, by the way. That's I know. radical. But do you mm. think maybe we could have avoided that seeming radical if he could have talked about it back in the 40s? But oh, you're yeah. right. I mean, you would have I mean, never been elected, probably. There's, like, a meme... Not a meme, but, you know, the idea that... Uh, Roosevelt uh, is the reason we have term limits because yep. uh, Roosevelt was elected three times. Four times. Four times, right? Yeah, yep. yeah. And and there's like that whole joke that uh, he would have been president forever if he just lived. You know? <laughs> yeah, because everybody liked him. They were him. happy. They were fine yep. with him. I'm I sure know. he did bad things. The chat's probably blown oh, up. Oh, yeah. But, but, Wait, uh, that is so human, interesting. Human rights. He was, you know. People well, were way suffering. to go. Like that guy even more now. I mean, I knew I liked him, but now I like really like him. <laughs> hmm. Um. So I suppose I should let you play another song. Although we could, sure. we also we recently. Well, we'll quickly mention this. We recently did have just an hour to talk on your new podcast, Crypt yeah. Talk, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Crypt what talk. kind of guests are you going to try to have on Crypt Talk? And what um, do you want to? What do you want the focus of the show to be? The focus of the show is that. Uh, I got talking with a bunch of people about, uh, we have a lot of these cripple to cripple conversations, uh, where, where we just have really real thoughts about what, uh, it's like to be disabled in society right now. Yeah. And, uh, I think we have these really honest conversations, uh, in private. And yeah. I think a lot of the times, uh, the places that give you an outlet to have them in public, you're censored. You have to worry about sponsors and you have to worry about, uh, not offending people or whatever. And uh, I got thinking that I hated that. And uh, so I wanted to have these conversations publicly. Yeah. Um, so there's no rules. I mean, I don't, you were on it. Uh, we were pretty tame. We were pretty tame. But I think that was because I don't know you as a person all that well. And I learned a lot from that podcast. I learned yeah. a lot. Yeah. Because I mean, it's although we've like, cross paths several times we don't live next to each other yeah, yeah it's too bad i was always thinking like after we left that night in philadelphia for the show that we did together i told paul i was like i wish that we lived in <laughs> i wish they lived in minnesota because i feel like we would hang out with them in real life way too we, cold for me up there. well yeah i mean it's <laughs> too cold for me i'm just trying to focus on how pretty it is not how cold it is it is pretty but it's cold so yeah but i'm doing crypt talk right now it's just on uh, Twitch, it's live on my Twitch, uh, and then I put the recordings up on YouTube, uh, but hopefully, uh, this week, it's all gonna be available audio on every place you listen to podcasts. That's very so, cool. Yeah, I it have, was like, three fun. episodes so far. Yeah, it was really fun. I'll try to find the link while you're doing your next song and put it in the chat. Yeah, for people to yeah you can find it. it on my YouTube. It's okay. really easy. Yeah, Twitch is a little above my... Yeah, you can do it. You can bracket. link the YouTube one. It will be easier. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Well, so yeah. what's your next song? Uh, the next song I'm going to play is uh, called Cripple on the Staircase to Heaven. <laughs> yes. And, uh, uh, you know, like a, like like the other song, like Roosevelt, there's uh, there's these old crippled folk songs. You know, we all, we all know this. We're giving a pamphlet when we're born of <laughs> all the crippled art that's been made. Yeah, of course. And we just course. know about it. And we just know. And we also get this card, uh, the cripple card that gives us access to the archives, um, the great archives. And uh, during COVID, 
I've been uh, wandering these archives and looking for uh, the little gems that people didn't know about. And, and I thought I found them all. I really did. And then uh, this one popped up and uh, I'll play it for you. It goes like this. Halfway up the staircase, there sits a man who's given up his journey of a peaceful eternity. He is the cripple on the staircase to heaven. Yeah. He chats with passerbys about philosophy even god himself has given up on me on earth they didn't care and it's the same shit up here as you walk by and stare or shed a pity tear but he's no inspiration not porn to motivate He's a living human whose rights they cannot wait. And it made me wonder, oh yeah. Don't it make you wonder, oh, 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 yeah. Halfway up the staircase, there sits a man who's given up his journey of a peaceful eternity. He is the cripple on the staircase to heaven. That's, that's that one. <laughs> I like that one. So how often do you say you write about disability in your songs? I, I love the idea of cripple folk songs, and I think we actually do need to have some of those. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but like, I yeah. think I think it's in everything I write. Uh, but, but it's not as overt like that. Like, that's like clearly a cripple folk song. I've only written like three cripple folk songs, I feel like. Okay. Like true, but there's lots of songs that are about, um, like me or or the idea of some character that's crippled, uh. But but I don't know. I don't know. I don't feel like I don't plan when I write a song. It just happens. Well, yeah. That's. I mean, I hate that question because I also feel like a it permeates all of your writing. Yeah. No matter yeah. like it just because it's their perspective, and then b I don't plan ahead to write a song about something either but do you see your music as like activist music or just velvet cram music and if you like I'm it you like it art. that's I'm what i thought art. yeah i don't know no uh, that's cool I, I don't think i'm informed enough to be an activist or anything <laughs> uh, really i just yeah yeah i don't know <laughs> anything about laws i don't know <laughs> i suppose i mean it depends on the kind of activism you're talking about i suppose but um I mean, Crick Talk, that seems to me, maybe not, maybe activism is too broad a word, but the idea of, like, letting people hear real conversations about disability is, like, <laughs> that is a game changer. Like, that's yeah, what Roosevelt yeah. should have done. And I and I like that. Like, I like I like philosophy. I do. I, I you know, if I didn't, I, I didn't want to be an academic, so it couldn't be my major in college. Um but uh, I like it. I read a lot of it, and uh, I think we have it. I think I in my most recent crypt talk, we were talking about um, that uh, Julie uh, Judy Hyman. That's her name, right? Oh, human. Yep. Human. Yeah, yeah. I, yep. I read wrong. It's um, okay. Uh, she has been saying this stuff forever now. All yep. of this, everything, yep. every, all of us cripples are talking about now. She's been saying it her whole life. And yep. uh, 
We didn't have the language for it though. Like I still, I was talking with a friend, I'm working on a new song and I, I'm stuck on a word because the word doesn't exist. Like, like these words, ableism wasn't a thing. Like it, yep. we didn't have the language to talk about these feelings and I think, or, or, or theories and ideas. Like we didn't have the language. We, yeah, uh, we had a conversation, me and Judy, um, a while back. And I said, well, what do you think? I said, I bet you're pretty frustrated at this point. <laughs> like, saying, she um, <laughs> she's not, but she said, well, she said, I mean, in a way, like she said, well, yeah. she seems glimmers of hope, but the fact that we haven't moved the discussion that far forward in terms of like realizing rights, like if you make the ADA a law, but then you don't provide any funding, how and fast you don't it? enforce it. Yeah, how, and you don't enforce it, like, does it, What's I mean, it point? helps, but is it like a tree falling in the forest almost, right? And like, yeah, yeah. so she said she thinks the answer, <laughs> she was kind of kidding, is just like a bunch of people taking, like, control in government. Like, disabled people need to get involved I mean, exactly. in government. So, it is. Uh, With Tammy it's, Duckworth, it's for sure. Are there and other it ones? it has to happen. And yeah. I think, uh, yeah, for sure. And, and not being like, oh, okay, it's okay. And it's like, no, this isn't okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. We're allowed to be angry now. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, They've had like, the ADA was passed in 1990. Yep. So they've had what? 30, 30 years, years to, yep. to figure it out. We don't have to be educational anymore. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. we we're allowed to be angry. They've had 30 years. Yep, I think it needs, I mean, I, I agree. I think the sad part for me, though, is I do think we have to be educational still because nobody learned about it. Like, there is no Cripple Folk Tunes or book that they hand you. We haven't included it in any educational curriculum. For sure. And that yeah, yeah. needs to change. To me, if I could change one thing, it would be included in, like, every level of schooling you would learn about disability rights and history and stuff because for sure it's like it doesn't exist it's so weird it's yeah like yeah i took a an american yeah. minorities course in the high school and uh i took it because i was on the track team and the track coach taught it and i knew it was an easy a i'm not gonna lie um <laughs> but i also did it because i was into uh uh american minorities and and minorities because i am one yeah and uh when i took the class the, the teacher was really cool uh and he was like, it, honestly, openly, it is mostly African-American studies. That's what he called it then. And uh, he was like, but because I took the class, he added in disability. Which was Whoa. Cool. Do you think he kept it after you were gone? I don't know. I don't. I, he, I think he retired soon after. So I don't know. Because I, I always, was, cool. yeah. What? Yeah, I do wonder. Yeah. Yeah, with uh, COVID and all these changes of things going digital, which I think is really cool. And, like, people being able to work from home more easily. And I just hope that it doesn't, like, once we don't need it as a overarching society, that these things don't disappear. I mean, I'm planning to do these shows, I mean, awesome. even even when I go back on the road, just because it's, like, I think we need to keep this going. Uh, yeah. Like this yeah, idea. I want to stream all my shows from now on. That's Yeah, I know. No kidding. Even when I go back on tour, there's going to be streaming yeah. for sure. So... Yeah, interesting. So I we have time for one more tune. Which one is okay. this guy? This is uh, this is um a very serious song. No, it's not. It's uh none <laughs> of my songs are all that serious. I don't know that anything should be that serious. Um, but it's a song called Soggy Bottom, and uh, <laughs> I hope you like it. soggy bottom You're just a little overbaked You should drink some water And find the beauty in your mistakes And don't get too butt hurt 
by all those ones and zeros. They're all just trolls and jerks. Looking for some kind of hero. So even if you use the wrong words, say them with good meaning. Cause someday you may find that the earth has just been dreaming. And when the earth awakes, returns to the life it's living will be its subconscious with our dream lives now hidden Hi, one sec. I just wanted to make sure you were done because <laughs> I didn't want to cut yeah. you off in case no, there was a, a bridge. Um, that was awesome. I love that tune. It was oh, stuck in my head this morning, actually. <laughs> um, so good job. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so anything else you want to, like, tell people? You have a band camp. I included all your links Yeah, up I have band above. camp. I'm, I'm live on Twitch every day, except Saturdays most days, most Saturdays. But uh, I play Minecraft there a lot of the time. And uh, I'm going to start doing music streams there. I'm going to try to do a five-hour music stream soon. What? Oh, my mm -hmm. God. So you're not kidding. I was like, when he first yeah, told me it. he was on Twitch, I assumed he was playing music every week for five hours a day. And I was like, how does he do that? Are you going to just, like, do covers? No, you can't do covers. I'm just going to play and talk. And uh, it will be like a, a, a talking... Uh, joking around music stream. I can oh. sit and like play forever. Like just like come up with cripple yeah. folk songs for five Yeah, hours. I tried it. I tried it the other day for like an hour and it, it went well. So, uh, whoa. And oh man, well, that is pretty cool. So, your Twitch, um, do those all go up on YouTube too? The five hour thing? What do you think? No, you'll... they're they're exclusive on Twitch. It's uh, twitch.tv slash velvet crayon. Okay, and that's in the, the links, too. So yeah, go drop a people follow. Can, yeah, if you're a... I support you on Twitch. I think that's cool that they're making it... Like, it's sort of like a Patreon, almost. It is, can, yeah. yeah. I, uh, everybody tried to get me to do a Patreon, but I, I was like, I don't... Like, live streaming is so different to me. Like, I can sit there and talk with people, but, like, for a Patreon, I, I would feel like I had to edit and, like, do so much more. So uh, I like yeah. it. No, Twitch is cool. That's a, uh, yeah. So support him on Twitch. Um, I hope I see you. I mean, I'll, well, I'll be calling you about how to get reverb soon. But yeah, also, yeah, yeah. I hope I see you in person. Because, uh, yeah, it would be someday. cool to get to know you even better. Oh, yeah, yes. someday. After it will vaccines. Happen. I know, vaccine. It's got to it's gotta happen. I mean, it'll be, it's not going to be too Yeah, long. I think they're going to wait till uh, Biden uh, to do it. <laughs> and, and I think that's probably a better idea. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been planning on October, so I'm fine with yeah, January. Yeah, me too. So. I've been stretching it out in my mind so that I don't get disappointed if it, like, delays and delays. So it's yeah. all good. Um, well, it's really nice to see you, and I'm people enjoyed that song a lot. So definitely, that song is called Soggy Bottom for everybody yeah, who is asking. it's on Bandcamp. It's on the album uh, The Lost They Are a Generation. Which, is that a famous line, or is that a Velvet Cram line? It's a velvet crayon line. There's I the, really like it. You know, there's the the Bob Dylan, the times they are a change in. Yeah. And that, yeah. It's, I just so it's a play off of that. They are a generation. Yeah. Yeah, I really like it. Well, oh, thank, thank you. you for coming. And Thanks I'm going to get set up for a couple tunes here. Um, yeah. And see you soon, hopefully. See you soon. What? Do I leave the call? Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> see you later. Bye. Bye. Okie dokie. Um... 
that was very nice of him to join me. I really like that guy. We didn't talk about... So he does a lot of stuff. He was in, like, side shows, and he's, like, an electronic artist, and he does all... Not electronic, but he does looping, too. Um, so he is an interesting character, so maybe he'll have to come back someday discuss all the other stuff. So I am going to play a couple tunes for you. Here we go. No, I'll need to raise it a little bit, I think. Sorry. Ouch. Like. Let me just tilt this down a bit. There you go. Sweet. Okay, that should be good. Hello, everybody. I'm back. Um, Eventually, I hope to figure out what to do in the interim minute where I'm just setting up, but haven't figured it out. So, thank you for being on the show, Velvet Cran. Um, I am... Really excited that you got to see him. He's one of my favorites, uh, like, looping artists. And he's just really creative and does a lot. So it's inspiring to me to learn the technology end. That's what he's been really helpful with. He's the reason I um, ended up switching to this software with that cute little logo in the corner. That's all him because I did not know what I was doing. So anyways, I'm so glad to see you guys here. Um, Dean and Dagny and Ethereal Illusion and Tina and Bartek and Zanath. Um, thank you so much for taking time to hang out. Um, I'm going to do three tunes for you today. And the first one is a holiday tune. Um, in case you didn't know, Sunday, the 29th of November is the first Sunday of Advent. And not everybody celebrates, of course, but since it is officially after Thanksgiving, I had to do at least one Christmas song. So this is In the Bleak Midwinter. And we'll start out our, do you see the little Christmas wreath thingy behind me at Garland? Um, next week, I hope to have a few more Christmas decorations up. Our little crow in the back behind me on the counter has a little Christmas hat on. I don't know if you can see him, though. He's pretty tiny. So this is In the Bleak Midwinter. <coughs> yeah, Bartek, this is dedicated to you. <laughs> Actually, that was going to be really fast. Let me think of rhythm. I have this thing where I don't count in my head very often, and then I'm like, ooh, in the bleak midwinter, and it would have been really fast. So hold on one sec, starting over.
Heaven cannot hold him, nor the earth sustain. Heaven and earth could flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place suffices. I would bring a lamb And if I were a wise man I would do my part Yes, what should I bring him Give him my heart There you go. Um, that is probably one of my favorites. I mean, I have more than one, but one of my favorite Christmas carols. It's called In the Bleak Midwinter. Um, I did not write it. That was actually a poem originally that was set to music back in like the early 1900s. I could be making that part up, but um, that is In the Bleak Midwinter. It's nice to see you, Chris, joined in uh, after he took a little break and came back. So, um, thank you to everyone for listening. Um, I have a Christmas album um, because I am a real holiday person. Like, love the span from Thanksgiving to Christmas or even New Year's, I would say. Um, our anniversary is on the solstice, my husband Paul and I, so on the 21st. And so the this month is just like my favorite month of the year. Um, you'll be seeing lots of decorations pop up in the next few weeks. Um, and so I have, yeah, that Christmas album, um, Deepest Darkness, Brightest Dawn. And as I mentioned last week, on the 23rd of December, I'm going to be doing a Christmas carol sing-along on Zoom with my parents and my husband, Paul, and a few special guests that will remotely pop up on Zoom. Um, so join us for a little festive party a couple nights before Christmas, um, and you can watch the private replay link um, if you can't be there in person. So it's going to be fun. So let's see, what else did I have planned? Oh, yes. Um, I, is Vinoth still here? I think he might be, but if so, he had asked if I could do um, Lost in the Woods last week, so I thought I would do that one for you. And um, there's Vinoth. I see you. So I'm going to play Lost in the Woods for you right now, and we'll see how much time I have left after that one is done. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy. This is Lost in the Woods.
When you were lost in the woods, you were misunderstood by everyone, everyone. You were searching for words, but they came out absurd. And no one heard you, no one heard you speak. Your mind may lost the time. Where's your heart? Where's your heart today? Forgive yourself, but don't give yourself away. And now you're out on your own, getting farther from home. And everywhere, everywhere you see hurting and strife, people cling to your light. But no one sees you, no one sees you keep your white. It's all a lie. Where's your heart? Where's your heart today? Forgive yourself, but don't give yourself away, away, away. Forgive yourself, but don't give yourself away, away. There you go. Um, that is Lost in the Woods. Um, it is a pretty fun tune, and with a full band, it sounds a lot different, of course. But that's the solo version that I can loop, um, and it's pretty fun. So I've been working on that one, um, the looping version, for a while, because I missed playing it live without a band. So um, I have enough time to do one more for sure, and this is dedicated to... Um, the North and Ethereal Illusion both wanted to hear Bound by a Thread, and I know I did it, um, a couple weeks ago, but I know that a lot of people have heard that song for the first time in the last couple weeks because of YouTube randomly started showing that video to people. So I'm going to do, um, Bound by a Thread, and then I think it would be fun next week to do an improvisation because I haven't done one in a while. So if you have any um, ideas of what I could improv next week, it'll give me some time to think about it. So please let me know what you would like me to just kind of think about and then play for you. So um, I've done the Northern Lights. I've done Summertime. I've done Loneliness. Um, pets. I mean, I've done a lot of different ones. So if you can think of a cool <coughs> improvisation, I would love to do one for you. Um... And trying to think if there's any other news. Um, obviously, the tips that you are able to donate go to um, be they're split between me and Velvet Cran, so that is very appreciated. Um, and then next week, um, I am gonna have the special guests of Jeff Tweedy and Spencer Tweedy. So if you have ever um, watched or heard Wilco, um, Jeff Tweedy is the lead songwriter and singer of Wilco. So that's a pretty big deal for me to have him on this show. And I would love you guys to join me. Um, I think he's going to have fun getting to know the guests uh, who are tuning in every week because that's a big highlight for me anyways, is getting to know each of you online. So um, he'll be there with his son, Spencer, who is also a songwriter and an artist. So um, yeah, consciousness is a improv question I've gotten. I can think about that, but f use this song, uh, Bound by a Thread, as some time to let me know. Ooh, Santa getting ready for his busy, busy Christmas Eve. Chris, that is up there with things I would love to improv. So I'm going to think about it. So here is Bound by a Thread for you guys.
bound, bound by a thread Going down, down through the ages You could have stayed, but you came here instead to fill my life's empty pages. thread and I think that is about time for this show. Um, I'm really glad that Ranger Ron joined us for the very end. At least he's saying hello. Um, thank you to everybody who tuned in. Um, I'm yeah, I'm really enjoying these shows. I will be back next Sunday, as you know, um, at the same exact time, two o'clock central. Um, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, and 8 o'clock in the UK. And so I'm hoping that you can join me for a very exciting week um, with uh, Jeff Tweedy and Spencer Tweedy. Um, Jeff is from Wilco, so if you haven't listened, take a listen to them. I'm sure you probably have um, <laughs> heard of them, but just in case you haven't, go look them up and then come and join me um, and listen to some tunes. And I'll do another holiday tune next week as well um, as preparation. So... I really appreciate you guys hanging, and thank you to Velvet Cran. Um, any tips you donate will be split with him today. So, mwah, mwah, mwah. 
See you next week on Sunday, the, what is it, the 6th of December, officially getting closer to the holidays. So, okay, see you soon, guys. Take care.